Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Sean Dykes, President and CEO of American Kuma Mining. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Sean. No problem. So American Kumo recently announced that the Kumo deposit is amenable to significant upgrading using ore sorting technology. Can you explain to me what ore sorting technology is? Oh, certainly. The, basically, ore sorting is a, a method of separating the material that contains the metal from the waste rock. The easiest analogy and the simplest is to imagine a large room and imagine that is a block that's actually being mined. Now at Kumo, within that block, we have narrow veins that occupy about 10% of that volume. That material, it contains all the metal. So if we could come up with a method of separating out the rock that contains the metal from the waste, we have significant benefits from that. Now we know for the last 10 years that we can do this visually. Now we have now discovered that there are machines that allowed us to do this. This will allow us to mine a large tonnage, yet process a lower tonnage thus reducing our costs and our capital costs. Okay. Can you tell me what makes the deposit amenable to using or sorting technology? Well, Kumo is ideal because it's a vein stockwork deposit. And we've known that probably somewhere in the range of 10 to 15% of the actual material contains the grade. The rest is basically uh, waste. The veins are generally the size of your fingers mm -hmm. going through them. And the, and the grade... The more veins you get, the higher the grade. So even though we may get one vein or five veins or 10 veins, there's a lot of waste in between. And as I said earlier, ore sorting gives us the ability to separate those vein material. Oh, is this a common technology? Are many people using this right now? It's been around since oh, the 70s. And that time it was back then generally on a small scale. The, the machines were very small, the technology was new. It's only in the past 10 years that it's gotten up to large scale type processing numbers and the sensors have got into multi multiple areas. And what ends up happening now is that a lot of mines are looking at the technology in order to get upgrades. Some of the major mines, the, uh, the big ones, the copper mines, uh, Escondida, Red Dog, Gold Corp are all examining the use of ore sorting you know, on their deposits. And again, the idea is to reduce your operating and processing costs to make the uh, deposit more profitable. Not all deposits are amenable to ore sorting. The disseminated deposits where basically the grade is uniformly distributed don't really apply much to sorting. You need a vein type deposit. Okay, now what are some of the benefits your deposit specifically could see from using this type of technology? Well, the benefits are huge. It's a game changer for us, mm -hmm. ore sorting, because basically, our numbers so far using the existing and most recently announced resource calculation, we end up having an operating cost per pound somewhere around 50 to 70 cents a pound. So let's say under a dollar for now as we investigate. That also occurs is a, a, about an 800 to $1 billion dollar reduction in capital cost. Because what we end up doing is say, say we can process 100,000 tons or 200,000 tons mine that per day, but only process 25 to 50. Mm -hmm. So it reduces our all-in costs. With Molly prices down in the 545 to $6 range, an operating cost on dollar, even at today's low prices, Kumo is a very profitable operation. Okay, yeah, Molly prices really aren't doing so well lately. Are you confident in the project just because of its economics, or do you see a price turnaround coming? I see both. At, um, at the current price, which is 540 a pound, Molly, that's below probably about 50, 55 percent of the world production. The Chinese, for example, they produce 30 to 32 percent of the world supply, but their cost is 12 dollars a pound. Mm. Primary Molly produces the lowest cost I'm available aware of is about six dollars a pound at the Henderson. There's only one that's the only primary Molly mine left in North America of any consequence. Uh, basically, uh, we've lost probably about eight, 80 to 100 million pounds of molly off the supply this year with Thompson Creek shutting down, Freeport uh, cutting back production at Henderson and, close, and looking to close the Sarita mine. The demand for molly's dropped about 5%. Mm -hmm. So we're still in that 500 million pound demand range, lost 100 million. So we're going into deficit. So the way I look at it is eventually 
molybdenum has to return to sustainable prices. And the same with copper, it's the same with all metals. A lot of them are below significant quantities uh, what it costs to, to produce. Therefore, I see in the next couple of years a significant rise in these metal prices. Just like the prices go too low in this market, they'll go too high mm -hmm. and eventually settle down to more reasonable levels. And we will be able to take advantage of that because we need about two or three years to get to feasibility and to finish off our work. And if we, like I said, it looks like we can produce molybdenum for less than a dollar a pound. We're going to be one of the most, not only the most uh, profitable molybdenum mine, we're also ranking up there with some of the, the copper byproduct producers. Mm -hmm. and, there's, and this is one of the first optimizations we're doing. The ore sorting, um, we've got probably about another dozen or so optimizations to perform, all designed to look at lowering the cost. Of production. All right. So specifically, what catalysts can investors expect next from the company? Well, Charlotte, I think we'll have several catalysts over the next year. Um, the obvious one is, is continue the work on the ore sorting. Um, we're, in fact, today I just shipped off to the next uh, level of samples off to uh, Steinhardt, mm -hmm. who are basically a German-U.S. company that does the actual sorting, to run the material through the through the actual machines that we would use. And then later on, we would have a bulk sample test. We will probably send five or six tons. Um, on the other engineering front, we're going to be looking at various different um, things like in-pit crushing, conveying, all sorts of different optimizations designed to look at what were our capital costs. Again, moving forward on the engineering side of the feasibility, uh, to get to feasibility in that two to three year period, which is our goal. Also, we'll start to uh, work on uh, basically uh, looking at doing our drill program this summer, um, working on the environmental data collection in preparation for the environmental impact statement that we will probably end up being required to do once we get all the data we need to establish things like what mining method we're going to use, how we're actually going to go about it, site selection, these type of things. So 2016 is a year of transition for us. Because the, the ore sorting is that catalyst, it's that trigger that changes the whole economics of the deposit and allows us to proceed as soon as possible to feasibility with the idea of we will catch the next upswing in metal prices. And I think, to be honest, I think we have a perfect storm. Um, I, like I said, it's an opportunity and um, we're taking advantage of that opportunity in, in this market. I'm a contrarian. Mm -hmm. And I just love these times, even though it's, it's tough times for us all. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Sean. Oh, thank you. And once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network. American Kumo trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol MLY. <laughs>